So 343 just had a live stream discussing a lot about Halo Infinite and everything that they're improving on about the game. Major customization and progression changes coming to the next Tenray event. Discussions about customization, store, and monetization. What are 343's priorities after the holiday break? Their long-term priorities and some other topics like the next event called Winter Contingency. So in this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know. We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again, give you a news and informational video on Halo. We have a lot to talk about today, so if you want to jump to a specific topic guys, timestamps in the description down below, or you can just watch the whole video and get all the details. So let's not waste more time. If you guys like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button, helps out the YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, make sure to tap subscribe because you come to the right place to do that. So let's get right into the content here. So let's start off with the 10 Rai event. That event, which had some good content in it, but it just wasn't utilized properly. And 343 recognizes this and they're making big changes to the next time the event rolls around in early January. This is what Jerry Hook had to say. So I didn't do a good enough job of reviewing a bunch of the assets that went out with like marketing. And for Tenrai, what that meant was is the marketing team did all the right things. They put all the things together and they showed basically a samurai. The problem is they showed a mixed samurai. And our goal is always that when you see something for earn in a season and it's earnable in like an event uh, track for an event, an event pass perspective, you can't earn that gear in the shop. You can't earn that gear in the battle pass. It's dedicated to your events. And uh, so we want to make sure that when we're showing assets from a marketing perspective or communication perspective, players are very clear what's store versus what's free. So one of the things w we did is we worked with um, our team and our, business, and our business team to work together to say, hey, look, how can we do several things? One, we want the events to be a place where you can earn new content and not care about whether you're going to pay or not. And we want that content to be high quality. That's why we wanted the Fracture. It's completely new armor. That's all earned by the player playing during the event. It's completely new achievable stuff throughout the entire season. None of that should be available in the store. We made that mistake. I'm sorry about that. So what we've done is we pull back a bunch of new gears so that when Tenrai comes back in January, you're going to see a lot of changes to the event structure that we have. One, you're going to see less swaps and XP, and you're going to see more actual content. Um, content being, you know, uh, shoulders, coatings, um, you know, gear pieces. Um, two, we're going to replace those pieces that were mistakenly put in uh, the store uh, as well as the event pass. We're going to replace those completely so they'll only be earnable within the Tenrai event itself. And the other key piece from an event structure perspective that you're seeing here is, is it's not just about Tenrai for us. The Fracture event is unique because it goes across the entire season, but it's also just how we manage e event structures in general. Um, and the team's done a really good job of trying to, hey, how do we just make these more fulfilling so there's more free content, more earnable content for players just playing the game so that their, their time, again, is being uh, very respected that they're committing to Halo um, and they don't have to put dollars in, in, in the bank, basically, to be able to do that. Uh, so you'll see that coming up. So yeah, all the information he just said, super positive stuff. I'm just kind of curious what's going to happen with the people who actually paid money for some of that samurai customization that's in the shop that will probably now be moved into the battle pass. Are they going to get like a refund or some sort? Or maybe like a cool sticker or something? I don't know to kind of reward those people for jumping in and spending money. I will say that after watching this live stream, it sounds like you might want to hold off on making major purchases within Halo Infinite. Maybe like a thing here or there, not that big of a deal. But if you're like a guy who like spends 100 bucks a month on Halo, you might want to hold off on your purchases because it sounds like a lot of things will be changing. But we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Xbox marketing lead for Halo, Noah Benish, said this also on Twitter, saying that all XP boosts and challenge swaps after tier 10 of the pass have been removed and replaced by other items, including the full Kabuto armor set and pose. Which I think sounds fair since it is a free event. You want to try to get people to play the game, right? Especially with the new XP system that we have with this go next go around when it comes to Tenrai. Like getting through that 10 first 10 tiers shouldn't really be that difficult, honestly. Especially if you're utilizing double XP boosts. Talking about completing challenges and double XP boosts, they also say that more event challenges will be available for players to go through and they will have this issue of being stuck with last event having an issue with like weekly challenges would come in, right? And you 
would try to do your Tenrai event stuff, but then all your weekly challenges with regular ones would just kind of fill in. You'd have to complete those before being able to do your Tenrai events uh, challenges to progress with the battle pass. Big pain. So they said that now that once these events come in, they're gonna prioritize the Tenrai event challenges. So you pretty much at least always have one to accomplish. Again, a big step in the right direction. Sounds like a fair move. I'm totally down with that. Next 343 goes into customization and monetization as it's been a huge issue with Halo Infinite. Where yeah, some of the bundles has got me scratching my head going like, you're really charging me 20 bucks for this and stuff like that? Free to play players essentially get like no customization whatsoever. And Jerry Hook continues on talking about this. And I wanna make sure to cover this as well. Like we wanna look at our store. Um, one of the biggest challenges that we knew that we would have, and no matter what we did, we were going to have this, which is changing Halo 20 years of box product models to a free-to-play model is not something that is going to be inherently satisfying for most of our players. Um, we get that. Uh, however, we don't think we just have to continue to follow normal tropes of the industry to make that effective. And we think we can do some things uh, better for our players and better for the game uh, experience that helps push that edge a little bit. Um, and, and so we're just taking a look at that. And that's pretty much across the board. Taking a look at the bundles, where we're seeing value, what, what feels valuable, what doesn't feel valuable, what experiments can we put in there to see what, what people like and what people don't like. We need to make sure that we're, that we're able to at least, you know, pay for the continuation of the multiplayer game on a regular basis. And that's what, that's what these models help us do. Um, the other big piece is just our customization. The customization is really the engine for people to play the game and enjoy, whether it's on the free side or on the paid side. And we have to make sure that that customization is actually doing what we expect it to do, like everything from the core system to um, the way we do emblems across you know, multiple pieces of content or the way we do coatings across multiple pieces of content. We just have to take a look at all of that. Um, and so some of that, we have, we have some conversations going on right now for a bunch of that, um, but it's something that is for sure top of mind. I would agree with Jerry Hook that going to this free to play model was gonna be a growing pain for the community as a whole, because Halo's always been like a bit of a collection game since like Halo 3, where by playing the game, you get some unlocks and you pretty much have been normalized to just be able to get everything. But that's not how free to play games are designed nowadays. They're designed now to just provide you so much content on a regular basis that you just kind of pick and choose what you like and you don't get to have everything because there is so much to have. Like for right now, an example on the store that there's a $20 bundle to have the Hazop armor set that was like from Halo Reach back in 2010 being sold for 20 bucks to me, I feel it's kind of like, bro, what are you doing? That should be in the battle pass since it's like a Halo Reach themed armor set. But to some people out there, you know, they might be worth the 20 bucks and they say they're taking a look at that. I'm sure 343 has the data to evaluate whether or not the stuff that they're providing actually is a good value. Right now, I would say it's not, but it, it's very close to actually being pretty good. If like all the prices in the store were like cut in half, I honestly think there'd be like no issue whatsoever. Like, oh yeah, I'm sure I'd pay 10 bucks to have the Hazop armor set. Sure, that helps support the game. And Jerry Hook even mentions that the internal feedback at 343 sounding a lot like Reddit. That's an actual quote, which if internally 343 is sounding like Reddit, you know that not a lot of people are enjoying what's going on with Halo Infinite's monetization. But the important thing is that 343 is listening. They're taking in the feedback. They're trying to see how they can still monetize the game to where like, obviously they can still run it as a business, but also be user-friendly. And it seems like a lot of things are moving towards the user-friendly, consumer-friendly side of things, which I think is obviously the right move to do. Next, Jerry Hook continues on talking about things that they're looking to do at 343 beyond the holiday break. This is gonna be kind more like high level kind of things about like what their general plan of attack is moving forward when it comes to updating Halo Infinite. And this is what they had to say. Taking more looks into the playlist models to see where they can improve on that balance patches and how they're going to roll out for Halo Infinite since we haven't had one yet. I mean, right now the sandbox is in a pretty good state, but there certainly are some things that need some buffs and some nerfs. The buff definitely being like the Ravager, which they actually mentioned here on stream that like, yeah, it's pretty weak. And like, I would totally agree. Just like go back to where it was during the flights. I'd be totally happy with that. I mean, I would also like to see like a nerf to the assault rifle. Uh, not really like a huge nerf because I think it's in a pretty good spot, but maybe just like increasing the max spread happening soon. If you're just holding down the trigger, 
Probably would see like to see that something like that happen, like a really small nerf. But like really, honestly, like right now, for the most part, the sandbox is in a pretty good state. But I would just like to see minor tweaks. It's kind of like a nine out of ten situation for me. Also talking about the balance with free to play players earning content at a better rate. Because right now, with like the season pass, it is like almost nothing like of actual content because i consider like actual content being like coatings um and also like armor sets and things like that i don't count like emblems or you know uh different like backgrounds and nameplates and things like that i don't really count that as like actual content it's kind of filler stuff that's fun i mean technically it's content but people really want the armor sets they really want the quote coatings and if you're a free-to-play player you're not really getting much of that through the battle pass uh, honestly, I would say if you're a free to play player, don't buy the Battle Pass right now. See what 343 does with Season 2, which comes out in May. The one thing they didn't mention at all was the ability to earn in-game currency through playing the game, which I think is something that should be happening with Halo Infinite. I know that Call of Duty does this, as like, long as you kind of grind through the Battle Pass, it will give you enough money to earn another Battle Pass for free. So you're rewarding those free to play players for sticking with the game, which honestly, playing time for players is super important, especially for Halo, as we're kind of coming from the ground back up into like the mainstream for when it comes to shooters, that like, you need to really reward those free to play players because like, they're spending their time playing your game, reward them with some good stuff. And right now they're not getting that. I'm a big advocate for in earning in-game currency and they didn't really mention that, but I would love to see that happen. Some more long-term overview kind of content that we kind of like down the road kind of stuff that they'll be working on saying that 343 doesn't like how the XP boost system works right now. I mean, honestly, I think it's all right, but I would like to see if it, the game time only clocked down when you're actually in a game, not in just real time. They also mentioned about better UI indicators for challenge difficulties. They're going to take a look at customization, ranked modes as well, and backfill for MMR and also UI experiences for ranked. And a lot of these long-term changes are on the top of the priority list when it comes to season two and season three when it comes to updates where season two is happening in May and season three most likely in August. Next, we got kind of like a mixed bag of a bunch of different news. We finally got some concrete information on the Winter Contingency event. We got some updates coming to B2B being 10v10. The Halo TV show not being canon and creating its own timeline. And how you can't fully trust data miners. Surprise. But let's get right into it. But here's a teaser for the Winter Contingency. So yeah, when they said teaser, they really meant it on that one. But obviously with the music and the different coding, it's going to be a bit of a holiday theme. I think that coding looks pretty fun. I'm definitely excited for it. This winter contingency event will start on December 21st and run until January 4th. Though there have been some leaks about some of the content you will be able to unlock within the event pass that's happening for the winter contingency, that being like the coatings and some emblems and things like that. But seeing like multiple emblems and multiple coatings and things like that at different ranks is what's been suggested by the leaks that you know a lot of people they're like what the hell is this don't do this again jerry hook does say that a lot of the stuff that you're seeing in leaks are placeholders where like you you're not, you're not gonna be unlocking the same emblem three times over a lot of that's just placeholder stuff so don't get too upset about it but there are some other leaks like reindeer ears and like a santa hat and like a snowman head which we covered previously on the channel so this next event looking to have some actual like pretty cool customization definitely gonna be better than 10 right the first time around halo support recently tweeted this out with the recent issues with btb servers saying that they changed the server size temporarily while they look for investigations on this fix that btp will be temporarily reduced from 12v12 to 10v10 i don't know about you guys but i have not been able to find any games in btp for the last few days which has been a total shame i mean they didn't even bother to play it on the stream because well not very many people can actually find games because you literally just can't connect to the servers. I haven't tried it with the 10v10 update, but hopefully that alleviates things for the moment while they look for a fix for the server issues that are going on with it. And lastly, they covered the Halo TV show, which is something I'm still super excited about. We recently got the trailer, which I showcased in my last week in Halo video that I couldn't really show the trailer because of copyright issues with YouTube. And the big announcement that they had with bringing on Kiki Wolfkill was saying that it, the Halo TV show is creating its own separate timeline, calling it the Silver Halo timeline. This is essentially just so then like the TV show itself can be a kind of its own contained bubble canon. It's not directly tied to the canon of Halo, but it definitely takes strong inspiration and tries to do 
it justice without being like directly tied to it and having those constraints which i know has been a huge issue with a lot of people within the community i mean yeah i would love to see this tv show be canon as well kind of like like a marvel universe kind of thing you know uh but the thing is that this is really standard when it comes to making anything into like a tv show or into a movie they always take the source material cut out some characters even make some new characters merge characters together create different plot, plot lines and things like that and you know they make a great show out of it like the walking dead for at least for the first four seasons was completely different from the original comics uh, even game of thrones I mean, everyone loved game of thrones but that wasn't 100 accurate to the books no official release date on the Halo TV show. It's still slated for early 2022. Uh, once we get a hard date, I'll let you guys know, but I'm expecting it sometime in uh, late winter, early springtime, probably around March would be my expectations. Definitely not in January because generally in media, that's where all the trash gets released. But once we get some hard details, guys, you know I'll let you guys know on this channel here. If you're new to the channel or missed any content from me recently, check out those playlists right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.